What's up, y'all? It's El Nino. So, you want to get into Ninja, but you find it too overwhelming. You think it's complicated, or you just simply want to get better at it, and you just don't know where to start. So I'm going to be teaching you guys everything you need to know about this job to its core, whether you're a beginner getting into Ninja, or you're an advanced player, but find that you could be a lot better. I've completed all the Savage and Ultimate content as a Ninja, and I don't just say that as some sort of flex. It's more of a assurance that you're in safe hands for this video, as I will explain many concepts about Ninja that the average player won't even think about. Getting into this job will be difficult at first, uh, even overwhelming, but with time, you can master the fundamentals and you can become the Ninja Prodigy. I want to emphasize that for the timestamps where I will talk about the full rotation, it will be level 90 rotation, and it will include AoE rotation as well as for dungeons. If you want a level 70 and 80 ninja guide, you know, for Yukob, Ubu, and T, um, which is ultimate content that is locked behind you being level 70 or 80, depending if it's Yukob, Ubu, or T, I have a completely separate video uh, for that, and I'll put it down in the description below. Make sure to browse through the timestamps in this video if you want to skip to you know, a specific sh section of the video um, as you wish. So let's get this party started. All right, so here we go. We're gonna be talking about the basics first, and I'm not gonna make this part too long since it's going to be extremely basic. And I'm also gonna be adding some stuff about mudras and which mudra combinations are best to use. Reminder that this is a burst job. So you're just getting into Ninja and you wanna explore what this job is about. So Ninja is a burst job. It's all about using your trick attack window. We're gonna be using a dummy here to kind of demonstrate some of the basics. So firstly, we'll explain the job gauge. You have your Hutan and your Ninki. So what you see here is Hutan. Right here, your Hutan right now, it doesn't show anything obviously uh, because it's off. You need Jin Chi 10 with this combination and I will be putting a Mudra sheet to kind of explain all the Mudras but not to overwhelm you too much here, but basically these different mudra combinations is ninja's identity. And one of the things you really need to know is Hutan. Um, you're going to be using this pre-pull uh, pretty much every time because you want your Hutan gauge running. As you can see now, the Hutan gauge is running. What this does is it reduces your weapon skill GCDs, um, which will make your GCDs go off faster. So you always want to keep your Hutan gauge up for the entirety of the fight. Um, with your GCDs, you're going to be able to, of course, increase your Hutan gauge, um, and you have multiple tools to do that. The first one is Armor Crush. So you have a 1-2-3 GCD combo. Um, so you have your Spinning Edge, which gives you also Ninky. Every time you use a GCD, it will give you Ninky. This is the next part of the um, job gauge. Ninky is going to be used to dump Babakakra or Hellfrog or Bunshin. You're going to have these different um, tools to spend Ninky on. And just to make it simple, Babakakra is a single target Ninky spender. Hellfrog is an AoE Ninky spender. And Bunshin basically makes a clone of yourself. So you're able to have this clone also deal damage. Um, so that's the general idea behind Bunshin. It makes your GCDs hit twice. Um, but remember that it's pet potency. So it's not going to be like high, high damage compared to a regular Alien. The Bunshin, the clone, will do less damage. And it will also give you Ninky Gauge itself. Um, so each time your Shadow or your clone lands an attack, it's going to give you 5 Ninky. So your 1 GCD, it gives you 5 Ninky. But with a clone, it will give you 2 because it will double 5 and 5. The clone always gives you 5. Anyway, so this is the basics of Ninky and the Hutan. Now, for Hutan, you also have a recovery tool, which is called Huraijin. So with this weapon skill, uh, it basically gives you Hutan immediately and completely skipping the Mudra combination to use Hutan. Okay? So you can Huraijin, and it's, it will give you Hutan. Now, you never actually use this in combat, just know that it's a recovery tool because it does very low damage. Ideally, you would get your armor crush up like this, you will get your Hutan up like this, sorry, and you will GCD until you reach the third combo. Now with the third combo, you have two choices, either Alien, which is 
a rear GCD. So you'll be on the rear and it will do higher damage if it's on the rear. Or you get up to Armor Crush and you will hit on the flank. If you watch my Hutan here, it's going to increase that Hutan by 30 seconds. So throughout the fight, you want to make sure that your Hutan gauge is up with Armor Crush. You want to make sure as you're building Ninki that you want to spend it and not overcap. The reason you don't want to overcap Ninki is because you are losing damage by capping. You want to make sure that you're always spending it before it caps. So right now, for example, I'm at 80 Ninki. I will use Alien, and you'll see that it'll jump to 95. And if it was under Bunshin, it will be an extra 5, so it will be 100. That's the maximum you can be. You can be max 100. You just don't want to get more than 100 because if you see, now that it's max, if I keep doing GCDs here, right, I'm literally losing the ability to get extra Ninki, okay? So you don't want that. So now you know about the Hutong gauge, now you know about the Ninki gauge, um, and you know your flank, your rear. Mudra combinations, just remember that your Rayton uh, is your highest single target damage uh, ninjutsu. You have access to ninjutsus, um, and these ninjutsus will deal very high damage. It's basically your burst window. Without getting too advanced here, the idea behind ninja is using trick attack and mug to increase your overall damage. So we'll talk about trick attack first. Trick attack is a 60 second um, off global cooldown, uh, which can only be used when in stealth. So, in combat, you cannot use stealth. So if I GCD right now, the game will count me as combat and it will give me the inability to use stealth, meaning I can't use trick attack. So the idea is you want to use Sutan by using Ten Chi Jin combination, and this will give you the ability to use trick attack, and Sutan lasts for 20 seconds. So now you can use trick, and during this time window of 15 seconds, you're going to want to use your highest damage abilities. This includes Kasatsu into Hyosho Ran Ryu, which is your hardest hitting ninjutsu. When you press 10 and then Jin, you get a Hyosho Ran Ryu, which is your highest damage. So you always want to prioritize using the highest damage ninjutsus. And this is how you generally play ninja. Just know that Mug is also a DPS increase, meaning that you want to use Mug with Trick Attack to have an overall DPS increase. Your Trick Attack only increases damage that you deal to the target, not your team. With Mug, it is the entire team, which will add a vulnerability to make your entire team do this much like damage. 5% of their damage will be increased, including yours. And then during this window, you will use it with Trick Attack. Now we have odd windows and even windows. Even windows are things that are 120 seconds, such as Tenchi Jin, your Meisui, and your Mug. These are all 120 seconds and they will be used every even window. Every job has a even window and a 120 raid buff, 120 second raid buff, including Ninja. So. The idea is you're going to use Trick Attack every time it's available and then it will line up perfectly since it's 60 seconds. Trick Attack will then be available in the 120 second window. So this is generally how you're going to want to play Ninja. Just know that it's all about the burst and this is how you would get started playing the job is remember that always use Trick Attack, always use Mug. This is going to depend from fight to fight, of course. It's not always going to be the case where you get full up time every single time. Sometimes with ultimate phases, things can change and then you'll have to adapt to it and do something different. For example, in top, you're gonna be seeing that a lot, but I don't wanna overwhelm you too much since this is just a basic section. Now you know the absolute fundamental basics. What I'm gonna be putting up on your screen now is the mudra sheet. As long as you learn and understand these different combinations mid-fight, you're gonna be using ninjutsus a lot. Without ninjutsus, ninja is basically just a one, two, three GCD job, and it does no damage. One, two, three, the whole time isn't gonna do anything. It's all about your trick window. It's all about the ninjutsus that you're using inside your trick, and it's all about the burst. So keep this in mind moving forward. 
let's dive into a bit more in-depth stuff that you'd like to know about Ninja. So for this section of the video, I'm going to be talking about Ninja must knows. This is going to be a bit more advanced stuff, whether you're a beginner or a veteran or whatever it is, these are things you have to know as a ninja. So we'll go over each thing one by one and kind of dive a bit deep into it. So first of all, multiple target scenarios in a condition where you need to uh, hit multiple targets. What do you do as a ninja? So just follow this rule of thumb. If you use Doton on three targets and they remain inside your Doton for the entire duration, you will want to use Doton. Death Blossom and Hake should be used on three above three targets. And ideally, you want to use Death Blossom and Hake um, on three targets, ideally with Doton. So keep this in mind. Hellfrog, you only want to use it on three targets and Katon and Goka Makiaku on three targets and above. Also, make sure all of this is inside Doton. You're going to be using this a lot in dungeons. Just so you guys know, Katon is your ninjutsu that's a fire AoE and Goka Makiaku is a Kasatsu, uh, Go Kasatsu Katon basically, which will give you Goka. Now we'll talk about disengaging from the boss. Here's the priority order from disengaging from the boss. Since we're talking about a melee job here, you want to constantly keep melee uptime. But sometimes you're not able to do that because you need to disengage. So what do you do in this situation? Here's the priority of abilities that you're going to use as you're disengaging. The first priority is using your suton when your trick is within 20 seconds or below. You're going to be using this rule of thumb a lot. Whenever your trick attack is below 20 seconds, you want to use suton because it will later enable you to use your trick. The idea is each mudra charge is 20 seconds. So you got 20 seconds and then your second mudra, mudra charge, that's another 20 seconds. So total 40 seconds. Now you have an excess amount, which is an extra 20 seconds that isn't really being utilized. So during that time, you're going to use Suton because trick attack is 60 seconds. So you want to use a Suton to make sure that it's ready to use it for trick. And you're going to have two out of two mudra charges by the end when trick is available. Your next priority is Phantom Kamaitachi. This is the ability that you will get after using Bunshin. Thirdly, it will be your Rayton. And lastly, your Throwing Dagger. So this is all for disengaging. Should you save Bunshin for Trick Attack or should you use it on cooldown? Now, you want to use Bunshin on cooldown unless it depends on kill time where it won't allow you an additional use. So keep this in mind. For example, on top, I actually hold Bunshin for the even windows um, as it's nearing towards the end of the fight and I don't lose an additional use. So this is something of a rule of thumb you're going to follow as Ninja. If your cooldowns misalign from Trick Attack, for example, if you die, right? And it's like permanently misaligned. It's better to continue using Trick Attack off cooldown rather than realign and like risk losing the usage. It's always just worth using it. If you're sure that realigning won't cause a usage, then realigning would be fine. Horizon is a recovery tool. You always use Horizon as a way to recover from either dying or situations where the boss cutscene is too long and then it drops your Hutan, then you would use Horizon. It's not really something you're going to GCD with. It's a DPS loss if you use it over Armor Crush. It's primarily going to be used to get the full Hutong gauge after you die or after a long transition or the boss is pulled before you get the cast Hutong pre-pull. Now, Doton. Should you be using Doton before level 90 in before level 90 content? So before level 90, it is actually a gain to use Doton when there's at least two targets. And both targets have to remain inside the Doton pretty much the entire duration. You're going to be doing this in UCOB for level 70 content where there's two adds. If you're before level 90, you should use Doton. Otherwise, if you're level 90, if you're doing level 90 content, you're not going to be using Doton. You're just going to use Raiju's because because you have Raiju's 
it is actually a DPS gain to use Raiju's over Doton at level 90. Alright guys, now we're going to be diving into the deep stuff that you need to know as Ninja and we're going to be talking about a lot of things here so bear with me, this is probably going to be the longest part of this video guide because there is a lot to talk about, um, so let's get this party started. I just want to let you guys know that with Ninja, um, you will initially start with a Hutan pre-pull, right? So this is pretty much your first step. You're going to prop Hutan and then you're going to stealth which will reset your Mudra charge. So if you can see here, we just go Hutan, and then if I Stealth, it will bring all my Mudra charges back to 2 out of 2. Remember that each charge is 20 seconds, um, which means it's a total of 40 seconds um, on 2 charges, and then you have another 20 seconds for Trick. Because Trick is 60 seconds, your Mudras are 40 seconds with 2 charges, then you're going to use Sutan, uh, when Trick is below 20 seconds, this is the first rule of thumb you're going to follow, is use Sutan when Trick is below 20 seconds. So you will have Raytons inside your Trick, which will deal the highest amount of damage possible. You always want to try prioritizing using Mudras inside your buff windows. That's the first thing you want to focus on. If you're unable to do that, for example, you have to disengage from the boss and you don't have Kamaitachi, you would use Rayton. Alright, so I'm going to be showcasing to you guys the rotation and kind of in a rave scenario where you have countdown. So we'll put the countdown on 12 seconds. Remember, I'm going to be putting the rotation on your screen so you can see the order and what you need to do. And I'll explain over it um, and kind of showcase what, I'm, what I mean and what I'm talking about. So we'll start right here, 12 seconds. Once it hits 10 seconds, you want to prep your Hutan and then... Use it, Stealth, and then Sutan when the countdown hits 6 seconds. Now, you Sutan when the countdown hits 1, Kasatsu. 1, and then you Pot here. 2, Mud Bunshin. Kamaitachi, Late Weave Trick, Alien Duad, Hyosho, Run Ryu. After Hyosho, you're gonna Rayton, Tenchi Jin, Ten, Chi, Jin, Mesu, Raiju, Baba, Raiju, Baba, and then Ten Chi. Rayton, Raiju, there you go. And then you have your last bunch and just use GCD here. One, two, three. This is where your pot will run out, right after that alien. And then one, two, now you check your Hutan, it's about 30 seconds. Armor Crush. So remember, as you're going through the rotation, you want to make sure you use Armor Crush when your Hutan drops below 30 seconds. You can even use it a little bit before after, you know, if it's like 20 seconds, you can use it. Let's say you're under Bunshin. Because you're under Bunshin, Alien would do more damage because Alien is higher potency than Armor Crush um, with the rear. Uh, it's massive. So you want to prioritize doing that. Okay? Now, a key fundamental thing that most ninjas won't know is your Bunshin when you get Kamaitachi off the Bunshin and how to play around it. We're going to be talking about, about that right now because throughout the entire rotation with Ninja, this is something you're going to have to pay attention to. Before we even go into that, you guys, I would really recommend this. You don't have to do it, but go to your HUD layout and put status info conditional enhancements um, separated from status info enhancements. This will make it so that when you use Bunshin, when you use uh, when you have your Kamaitachi available, when you have um, you know when you use Sutan, it will show here instead of here, which is like um, status info when your party gives you stuff. Status info for conditional enhancements is something that's specifically on your character. So I find that to be very helpful because you need to pay attention to your general uh, abilities, how long they last. And it's going to, as you're doing the rotation, you're going to have different priorities, which I will explain now. Now, if you guys already know, when we get uh, Bunshin, we get access to Kamaitachi. This, is, this ability, um, just know that it does pet potency. Meaning that if you're in a combo where your Alien is available and you're under Bunshin and you have Kamaitachi and you're inside your buff window, your trick attack or whatever, you have your buff, buff burst window, Alien's Edge will actually do more damage with Bunshin 
compared to a Kamaitachi. Keep this in mind. Just know that Kamaitachi will be used... You won't be using it in your even windows. You're going to be using Kamaitachi in your odd windows. Now, in the event that you double weave mug and trick, when you double weave mug and trick, all right, you don't want to use Kamaitachi unless it's going to run out because it's not worth letting your Kamaitachi run out as you see it just ran out there. It's not worth losing it and it's worth actually just using it even if you're not supposed to use it in your inside your mug and trick. You'll want to fit Kamaitachi inside mug. So whenever you don't double weave mug and trick, you want to use the inside mug. So if I go one and then mug, I can then Kamaitachi and then trick. This way when I use Kamaitachi, it's inside mug, but it's not inside trick. It's not inside, you're not, you're not, it's not being used after the double weave. So I'm going to show you guys an image and hopefully it will help you understand it much better. All right, so I decided to draw this here to make this a little bit easier to explain. Whenever you're double weaving mug and trick, you don't want to use Kamaitachi, okay? So you will use Kamaitachi when you double weave only if your Kamaitachi has 15 seconds left or below or basically when it's about to run out. It's never worth just dropping your Phantom Kamaitachi and losing it completely. It is never worth it. You always want to make sure you use it. So in the event that it's going to run out and you double weave mug and trick, you should use it. Just be careful as well that you don't overcap your Ninky while doing this. So make sure you dump above a Cockra in there um, because Phantom Kamaitachi gives you 10 Ninky, so you make sure you don't overcap. Now, in the event that you don't double weave Mug and Trick, where you use Mug, then Kamaitachi, then Trick, this is how you would actually fit Kamaitachi. Generally speaking, you want to fit Kamaitachi inside Mug. So Mug lasts 20 seconds, and Trick Attack lasts 15 seconds. If you double weave mug and trick, okay, and your phantom Kamaitachi is at 40 seconds left, you have plenty of time till your trick runs out and then you place that phantom Kamaitachi inside mug only. Because mug lasts 20 seconds, you're gonna be able to fit phantom Kamaitachi in your last few seconds inside mug. So that's where you want to throw it normally if you are inside, um, if you are inside your uh, even window, okay? Or you can just mug, then Kamaitachi. This way it's inside mug only, and then use trick attack. This is in the event that you don't double weave. Now, you are generally going to double weave with Ninja, um, especially after your opener. You kind of align it so that you use it uh, with Mug and Trick together. So keep this in mind when you double weave and you have Phantom Kamaitachi available. Sometimes you're not going to be able to double weave because you don't want to overcap your Ninky. Because Mug gives a lot of Ninky, so you have to make sure you dump your Ninky before using Mug. So this way you have, you made sure that you can double weave Mug and Trick and not overcap on Ninky. It's very important. Okay, so we got this basic fundamental idea down. This is very important. Learn how to use Kamaitachi, but also don't just underestimate its damage. It's still very good, and you just have to use it properly when using your mug window, when inside your even window. Now, in the event that you are in an odd window, and there is no mug, so it's just trick attack, you want to fit... Phantom Kamaitachi inside your odd window. Now, because you don't have Tenchi Jin, you don't have your Meisui, so you have no stress in fitting um, so many things inside the buff window. You can just use Kamaitachi inside Trick, and once again, you don't want to overcap Ninki when using the Kamaitachi. If needed, let's say you're under, let's say you're above 90 Ninki, right? You want to use Hyosho and then 
make sure you dump that ninki during your burst window and then use kamaitachi you're in no rush you have 15 seconds to fit phantom kamaitachi inside your buff window okay so as you have plenty of time now if phantom kamaitachi is going to run out you want to make sure you spent that ninki outside the buff window so that you don't lose you know so that you don't overcap this is the general rule you want to follow with phantom kamatachi all right i hope i explained this part because it may be slightly overwhelming but the general rule is use it inside odd windows don't use it in even windows but fit it inside mug okay there you go and here is when you have bunshin which also complicates some things but basically when you use bunshin you have five stacks of bunshin okay now under bunshin your stack potency priority is as follows now this priority isn't um from top to bottom this is more like from left to right okay so if you have alien available and you have kamaitachi and you're inside your burst window right and you also have bunshin stacks you're gonna want to use Alien's Edge over Phantom Kamaitachi. It will deal more damage. Just make sure it's on the rear. And then you're gonna do a lot more damage than Kamaitachi would. Just remember again, follow the rule we followed earlier. If your Kamaitachi is gonna run out, you use it. Regardless, you don't want to make sure... You don't want to make it run out. Now, Raiju will yield higher potency than Rayton. So if you have Rayton available and you have a Raiju, you use Raiju first. You want to fit the Raiju inside first because it, it, it will have the effect of Bunshin on it and it will actually deal more damage than Rayton would. Okay? So now you have no Bunshin stacks. Okay? So you have zero Bunshin stacks available and you're inside your burst window. Okay? You're going to want to use Rayton over Raiju. See, only when we're under Bunshin we prioritize Raiju. So here, Rayton yields higher potency than Raiju. And also Phantom Kamaitachi does more damage than Alien's Edge. This is all outside of Bunshin. So as long as you understand these fundamentals in what's higher potency and what's less under certain conditions where you have Bunshin, whether you're inside Mug, whether you're inside Trick, and playing around Kamaitachi, this is what makes Ninja really exciting and fun to use. It's a very active job, and you have to constantly pay attention whether you have a bunch of stacks, whether your Phantom Kamaitachi is going to run out or not. And this is the general rule you're going to follow. Hopefully, I've explained this as best as I could, because it's not the easiest to explain, so I did decide to put this in a picture format, which hopefully helps you understand the general rotation you're gonna go through as a ninja all right so here we go now i'm gonna be explaining the rotation all right guys now i'm gonna be showcasing the rotation with what we've learned and i'm going to basically talk over what i'm doing and just so you understand why i'm doing what i'm doing and why i'm using certain gcds or abilities over certain others using the dummy we're gonna just do up to a six minute window uh, so this is like, let's say you're in a fight for six minutes. This is how it's going to look like. Now, keep in mind, multiple fights have different transitions, different scenarios. So you're not going to do this every single time because sometimes it's just not possible because the boss becomes untargetable or jumps to the wall or whatever it is. All right. So now we're going to be under a raid condition, like a raid scenario. 15 second countdown. All right. So we're going to wait until it hits like 10 seconds, and then we prep Hutan. So we put Hutan, and then we use it, stealth, and then when it hits six seconds or five seconds, you prep Sutan. When the countdown hits one, use Sutan Kasatsu, one. And then pot, two, mud, bunching. Kamaitachi, trick, late weave, Alien's Edge, Duad, Yosharan Ryu, faint here if you need to. Rayton, Tenchi Jin, Ten Chi Jin. Meisui, Raiju Bava, Raiju Bava, Rayton, Raiju. You notice we're prioritizing Raijus because we're under Bunshin. Now, the rest here is going to be pretty standard. You're just going to do 1, 2, 3 GCDs while making sure you dump Ninky and armor crushing 
to keep your hutong gauge about 30 seconds there isn't like a specific rotation here you literally just make sure you're not over capping your job gauge now trick is below 20 seconds we're gonna prep sutong with ten chi jin trick attack is below 20 seconds that's when you prep it and then you're gonna keep gcd in here okay you keep gcd -ing and then use kasatsu kasatsu lasts 15 seconds so it's not going to run out so now trick yosho duad Rayton. raiju here we gcd when the Rayton comes up we tenchi Rayton. raiju and then gcd armor crush make sure we don't run out of armor crush Oh, sorry, we make sure we don't run out of Hutan. The next time my Hutan gauge is going to... We bunch in here, by the way. You always want to use bunch in every time it's up. And see, we armor crush here because it was below 30 seconds. We don't want to make sure it runs out. Helion, make sure we Bava. Do not run out of Ninky. Know how much Ninky you're getting if you're inside bunch in or not. We keep up GCD in here. Now you'll see that Mug... Mug is about to be up, so we need to make sure our Ninki is dumped. Now, here's the part. Look, we don't use Mug. Look here. Now we double weave Kamaitachi because before it runs out, it's 12 seconds. And then Hyosha Ran Ryu, dream within a dream. Ten Chi, wait on Ten Chi Jin. Ten Chi Jin. Ride, uh, May Sweet, Rayton. Prioritize Rayton over the Raiju because we're not under Bunshin. And then you're going to use all the Raijus and you'll see that it will all fit inside the mug and now it finishes. There you go. If you notice there, we didn't use the mug instantly as it was up. We waited so we double weave. This will make sure that it aligns with other raid buffs. Okay? This is going to be crucial. This is why we use the raid buff very early on with Ninja. We, we use Mug very early compared to other jobs. Now, Trick is below 20 seconds. We're going to prep Sutan. As you can see, prep the Sutan below 20 seconds. Bunshin is about to be up. We're going to make sure we use Bunshin. Get the Kasatsu. Immediately use it. Look at that. Here we go. Bunshin. What do we use? We use Kamaitachi because we're under Bunshin. Trick. Alien inside the Bunshin stack with the Trick window. Hyoshawaniyo Duad. Rayton. What do I do? I have Raiju with Bunshin. I use Raiju. I don't use Rayton. So we go Rayton here, get the Raiju, use that Raiju stack inside Bunshin. Always prioritize Raiju first, no matter what. We will do more damage in that. In that scenario, now we Armor Crush, we get our Hutan up. Continue GCD. Next even window is coming up. So make sure we don't have too much Ninky, because we don't want to overcap Ninky when we mug. Okay? It's still around 20 seconds. So we're just chilling. I'm gonna bobble right here. And now we prep Sutan. Trick is about to run out, we prep Sutan. Then we're gonna do one, two, three. Look at that. Hutan below 30 seconds, we armor crush. Make sure we dump Ninky because our, we, our mug is about to be up. We don't wanna overcap. Mug's about to be up. Now we use mug instantly. There it is. Look at that. We didn't overcap either. Yosha on Ryu. Rayton Duad. Raiju Tenchi Jin. Get that Tenchi Jin out. Ten Chi Jin Mei Sui. We Rayton over Raiju because we're not under Bunshin. This is the enhanced Baba Kakra. After you Mei Sui, you get an enhanced Baba. Right here. Bunshin's about to be up. We're not going to use Baba Kakra. We didn't use Baba Kakra inside the buff window there because Bunshin's about to be up and we're going to use Bunshin as soon as it's up. There we go. And then we're just going to do 1, 2, 3 GCDs. There you go. Standard 1, 2, 3. We keep the Kamaitachi for the trick window. We're in no rush to put it inside trick window. It's just the odd window. You can fit so many GCDs in there. There we go. We make sure we have enough. Uh, we make sure we, we're not overcapped on Ninky. There we go. Now, we're gonna trick. Look at that. There it is. We didn't overcap. Kyosho Duad, Rayton. Do another Rayton instead of Raiju because we're not under a bunch and stack. Raiju. Raiju. Trick window's done. There you go. Perfect. And now, guys, we're going to do the last mug here just to demonstrate this further. 
So now the mug is about to be up. 30 seconds. Trick is 30 seconds right at the moment. Remember, we use mug here every time it's up now. Every single time. Because now it's aligned with trick as well. Now, trick is below 20 seconds. Suit time. We'll have two out of two mud recharges. One, two, threes. Okay. Make sure we dump some Ninky so we don't overcap. Kasatsu. Armor Crush. Here we go. We're about to enter Monk. Use Monk. Monk Trick. Yosho Ran Ryu. Yosho Dwad. Rayton. Dwad. Raiju. Ten Chi Jin. Ten. Chi Jin. Mei Sui. Raiju. Baba. Rayton. Raiju. We have Alien. We use Alien. And then Kamaitachi at the end. See, in this condition, we had Alien and Kamaitachi. Which one did we use first? We used Alien because we were under Bunshin. It will deal more damage. It's always worth putting in the Alien instead of the Kamaitachi under that circumstance. And then using, using Kamaitachi after. It's worth because your Alien will do more damage. Now we'll do this final odd window. We prep Sutan. Okay. Just GCD standard. Standard GCDs. We're gonna wait for Kasatsu. Run the no rush. No rush. Make sure we don't overcap Ninky. Now we trick. Dump any Baba we have after that. Yosho. Rayton Duad. Rayton again. Because we're not under Bunshin. Rayton takes priority. Raiju. Here, I'm going to Alien's Edge. We're still inside Trick. Alien does more damage than Armor Crush, so we prioritized Alien. Now I'm gonna Armor Crush. There you go. I'm gonna do the final mug window here just for demonstration, just so it, it sticks and it's very, very clear. Bunch is about to be up. Use. Make sure we not overcapped on Ninky. Gonna do standard 1, 2, 3 GCDs. Now, trick is below 20 seconds. We're gonna suit time. Look at Kamaitachi. Kamaitachi is 35 seconds. I no longer have bunch and stacks. Okay, so here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna wait for Kasatsu. Kasatsu now. Dump the Baba. And now, Mug Trick. Yosho. Baba. Rayton. Raiju Dwad, Tenchi Jin. You can see my Kamaitachi is still 10 seconds left. I have time. Plenty of time. We do this. Look at that. Look at that. And now we fit in that Kamaitachi. There it is. Just like so. Now it was pretty tight <laughs> in that in that one. But there you go. And now that's how you play ninja. As you can see, it's fast paced. Um, you have to pay attention to your priorities. You have to know if you're inside bunch or not. As long as you don't lose a Kamaitachi. So in that last example there with Mug and Trick, you can actually use Kamaitachi there if you want. Because remember, Tenchi Jin and Meisui, as they go, they take some time. And then you want to prioritize Raiju's afterwards and the enhanced Baba Kakra afterwards. So in to be safe... Sometimes you can actually use Bunshin a bit early there after the double weave in the condition that's going to run out, right? So in that, case, it w in that case, it was pretty close. It was about to run out. Literally one second left, and I got it in. I got it in just barely. So just remember, something you want to pay attention to as you're doing the rotation is not dropping your Phantom Kamaitachi. Okay, so now I'm just going to be showcasing an AoE rotation where you're going to be doing this only in dungeons normally. This isn't something you're going to do actively in raids. This is with multiple mobs, many, many mobs stacked up together. Here's what you do, right? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to Horizon one of the targets. As you Horizon one of the targets, you give yourself Hutan. You don't need to pre-pull Hutan. There's no pre-pulling. You can just Horizon as the tank is pulling all the mobs. So this way you have your Hutan up. Now, after you use Horizon and you have your stuff, make sure you obviously use AoEs as you're following the mobs and wait till the tank stops all the mobs in one place. So you're literally just gonna Death Blossom and Hake the entire time until the tank decides to stop. Now when he does stop, okay, here's what you're gonna do. As you're building Ninki with with uh, Hake and Death Blossom, right? As you're building the Ninki, now you're gonna basically Tenchi Jin and then Chi, Ten, Jin, and then Katon, 
Kasatsu, Goka, Dwad, Katon, Mud. And then use your Mud, Health Rod, Kamaitachi. And then you're gonna use your Death Blossom and Hake over and over and over. Until you have a Katon, and you're gonna use another Katon here. Health Rod. And there you go. That, and then you're just going to keep doing Hake and Death Blossom, Hake and Death Blossom. This is generally how you're going to do your AoE rotation. Um, it depends sometimes how much Ninky you're building before the tank stops, before you use Mug. As long as you follow the general rule that you're not going to overcap on Ninky, you should use Mug because it will give you um, it will give you a lot of Ninky to use Bunshin, right? And also, you're giving Vuln to one of the targets, so they die faster. Remember, you also have stuns. You have Bloodbath. If for some reason you're getting hit by the targets, use Bloodbath. Use, use Shade Shift. It gives you a shield. That shield helps you as well through the dungeon if need be. So that's generally dungeon rotation. It's not very crazy. It's just standard. Uh, depends sometimes which dungeon level you're at, but the general rule follows. Your Death Blossom, your Doton, and if you have Tenchi Jin available, use Tenchi Jin and place the Doton from Tenchi Jin. Okay? And now, guys, I'm going to be talking about Shikuchi. Um, I completely separate this in a different type of timestamp because I feel like Shikuchi. And now we're going to be talking about Shikuchi. So advanced stuff that you need to know as Ninja. How to use Shikuchi effectively. This is a very, very, very strong gap closer. I would argue it is the strongest gap closer in the entire game, period. Just because of its speed and the ability to ground target, meaning you can precisely select where you want to end up when you gap close. It's massive. Now, the best way to use Shikuchi is first of all, set targeting range to maximum. As you can see, if I put my mouse further than this, it will not go further. See, it stops right here. Now, if you use Shikuchi normally, it will the color of this reticle will turn blue and it basically indicates that you can't use it. But with this, you can. All you have to do is double tap the Shikuchi button. You'll blink like this. As you can see, it's very fast. Um, here's how you do it. Go to character configuration go to target afterwards go to ground targeting settings and under here you will see it will says limit ring movement to targeting range and press action twice to execute what this means is first of all limit ring movement to targeting range means that the range of the shikuchi as i demonstrated cannot go further than its maximum range meaning you have absolutely zero chance of screwing it up you will always land at the maximum range if you just put your mouse all the way up. You don't need to be precise. It doesn't need precision. You just double tap. Press action twice to execute is the double tap. It minimizes you from having to left click, which is way, way better. It's way faster. And you simply just double tap the button. So you just target and then tap again. It's a double tap. So if I want to be quick, let's say I'm doing some GCDs. Right, I'm doing some GCDs and I need to do a mechanic over here and I have to be there, right? I can keep doing GCDs and then Shikuchi over, do the mechanic, right? And let's say I'm inside trick window during this, right? I can use my Rayton from here, right? Rayton, and after I finish doing the mechanic, I can ride you back to the target. Now, you want to use Raytons and ride you inside trick, so don't feel like you can do this every time. Um, just rely on Shikuchi to get you to areas. And then let's say you are doing GCDs and you Shikuchi over and you're under, you have Kamaitachi available. You're going to just use Kamaitachi and walk back to the target and keep your GCD rolling. So there's a lot of cool, fancy things you can do with Kamaitachi. Uh, sorry. You, there's all fancy things you can do with Shikuchi. It allows you to not only do some mechanics, but also get out of situations, gap close to keep continue melee uptime. You have so much range. All right. It is a 25 yal, sorry, 20 yams range. So it is massive. It's humongous. Always, always use it aggressively or defensively or use it to disengage. It's very versatile and it's honestly one of the best gap closes in the entire game just remember that every time you rate on it resets your shikuchi every single time 
So I will kind of demonstrate this a little bit. This is going to be very exaggerated. This is never going to actually happen in an actual game, right? Or an actual rate setting. But here's how it works. Like if I Shikuchi here, that's one, that's two. And then I Rayton, and then I Shikuchi, and then I Rayton, and then I Shikuchi. And then I can even Kasatsu, get a Rayton, and then Shikuchi. And then Tenchi Jin, Ten Chi, I get a Shikuchi, and then I Shikuchi. So you can Shikuchi many, many times. And the way to get a Shikuchi charge is through the Rayton. And you're gonna always have the gap closer because inside your buff window, whether you're using Trick or Mug, you're gonna use Rayton every single time inside your burst. Meaning that you're always gonna have two charges of Shikuchi at least after you finish your burst. So don't feel like it's not gonna be available or something. You have two charges of it so you can use one outside your burst, one inside your burst. Just use it whenever you feel it's applicable and you feel like it's it's gonna save you or you're gonna gap close. It's massive. One other thing, we have a Shikuchi macro that will help you. Here it is. I'm gonna be putting this in the pinned comment down below. So make sure you check my pinned comment down below. This is the, the macro. You can just copy paste it in your Final Fantasy macro area here and this this is it what this does by the way is it shikuchis you immediately into the center of the boss hitbox you're not gonna always want to use this this is why i have two hot uh, two uh shikuchis i have one that's ground targetable and i have one that's a macro the macro is going to be used in different situations and the ground target is going to be used in different situations so it's always good to have two of them in your hot bar at all times so in different situations you're going to do a different type of shikuchi so in this example let's say there's a mechanic where i have to be inside the boss right and i'm within shikuchi range and you know i don't want to have to double tap which i can if i want to or i can just press one button while not even looking at it, and I could just go right to it for free. Just remember, don't just rely on it. I highly, highly do not recommend you only rely on it because the ground targeting Shikuchi offers you so much more options and having more options is always better. So always use Shikuchi ground target as your first thing only use macro for certain parts of the fight that you feel like there's no uh, downside to it because you just want to get to the middle of the boss as soon as possible. You can do that. Just remember, it's dead center inside the hitbox. Dead center. Not to the side, not to the left, not to the flank, not to the rear. Directly in the center. So keep this in mind where there's mechanics where you have to be inside the boss hitbox but... At the same time, the boss hitbox is so large that people need to spread inside the hitbox. Let's say there's a mechanic like that for P11S, for example, with uh, Themis. This is a, a scenario where you don't want to use Shikuchi Macro because it's going to put you in the center of the hitbox and you don't want to be there. You want to be on the side with your partner pair inside the hitbox away, like, away from other people. If you go in the middle, you're not close to your partner. This is just an example I'm giving you, okay? And you're in walking range anyway, so you don't even need the Shikuchi in Themis, but I'm just giving an example of like a scenario where using Shikuchi would be bad. Also remember, Shikuchi cancels knockbacks if you time it perfectly. If you get knocked back and you time it perfectly, you can Shikuchi on the spot and continue DPSing, okay? You don't have to wait till you get knocked back and then Shikuchi you don't have to do that. You can, if you time it properly, and that takes practice, every knockback is different from each fight. Just remember that you can just double tap. Speed is your friend. You always have speed. You are the fastest, fastest dude ever. You're a ninja for crying out loud. You have a freaking Naruto run. You're so fast. So just remember, use the double tap. Use the double tap. It will help you a lot. Or if you don't want, you can just use the macro and time the macro shikuchi and then boom, blink towards the boss and cancel the knockback. Obviously, you also have anti-knockback arm's length to cancel stuff. So just keep that in mind. Another quick tip, by the way, is when you're in Tenchi Jin, just remember you can look around and still use it. So if you're in a gaze mechanic and you're inside Tenchi Jin where you cannot move during Tenchi Jin because it will cancel Tenchi Jin, remember that 
you can actually look around while inside Tenchi Jin and avoiding the gaze. All you need to do is, uh, you, as you're using the ninjutsus, to wiggle your mouse because you cannot move. So wiggle your mouse if you're in standard controls. You're going to want to wiggle your mouse. If you're not in standard control, if you're using legacy control, you need to press three buttons for that. So you need to press right click, left click, and then S, which will stop your character like this. And then you can move like that in legacy. With standard, you just hold right click and move like this. You don't need to press multiple buttons. But yeah, if you're doing legacy, it needs to be like this. You cannot move during this. So you're in Tenchi Jin, you cannot move. So this is one method. So you have to hold three buttons. But that's the downside of legacy in this example. I'm not saying legacy is bad or standard is bad or standard is better than legacy. I just personally use standard because it works for me. So keep this in mind, okay? And there it is, guys. That's our updated ninja guide. I really hope this helped out. I tried to make this as comprehensive and understandable as possible. Please, if there's something you guys don't understand, hit me up on Discord. Hit me up on my Twitch uh, in the description below. Hit me up in the comments below. Anywhere you like, feel free to ask me questions if you feel like uh, there's something you're not sure of. I engage with Twitch chat very often, so you guys can just hop in my stream, talk to me, I'm live every night EU time, so that's from 7 p.m. GMT all the way to midnight. Um, uh, I can actually, I even go further than midnight. I stream all the way to 3 a.m. So from 7 GMT to 3 a.m. or further, I'm usually live around this time, GMT time. So feel free to stop by, ask me questions about Ninja if you, if you wanna know some stuff. Uh, but yeah, I hope this guy helped out, guys. Um, I love Ninja. It's always been my favorite job, and I just wanted to get people into this job and just know that it may seem overwhelming. It may seem like there's a lot of things going on with the bunch and the Kamaitachi Prios, and it's a very fast job, but it's extremely rewarding, and it's very strong. It's a very high DPS job. It has a lot of mobility. It has a lot of, God, the freaking Mudras. You have range. You have melee uptime, and you can just literally move out to Rayton if you need to while inside Trick and still maintain high DPS. You don't need to be in melee range the entire time. Sometimes you can actually walk out for a mechanic, Rayton, and then like do another Rayton as you're walking back in. There's a lot of versati versatility to this job. And hopefully with this guide, I've helped uh, kind of introduce newer players to it, as well as... Um, improve current ninja players um and yeah that's really gonna be it guys again make sure y'all check me out on twitch if you wish and i'll catch you guys hopefully in the arena best of luck with your ninja adventures and thank you for watching peace out and i'm gonna give you guys an e-bow because everyone knows a real ninja prodigy doesn't use an eorzean bow he uses e-bow slash e-bow thank you very much also, don't forget, guys, to buy E-Stretch as well, because you want to be a badass ninja. You got to show them pre-pull that you ain't about messing around. You're going to go to the mock store, and you're going to get it, baby. Get that ninja game on, get that ninja face on, and kick some major ass.